Hey Greedy Gears, Roma here, and Luke is finally back for part 3 on our video series, Project Horseshoe! Yeah, recently we've had a lot of changes in our personal lives, which made it that this one and probably some upcoming videos are going to have to deviate from our usual schedule. We're very sorry about this, but we will still try to keep us as good as possible with the videos for the next few months. But we just can't keep the normal schedule anymore. But on the bright side, we've finally been able to finish the hardest part of Project Horseshoe, the frame and the electronics. So let's get started on this difficult journey we had to pass through to get to be able to make the housing of the drone. As usual, we first need a sturdy base to work from. For this task, we turn to 3D printing. Making the base of the drone to house the flight controller and the ESC and the receiver. Then making the arms that stretch out from the frame to be attached to the housing as soon as this is made. And naturally also adding the holders for the arms of the drone itself. with some offsets for a bit of visual flair in this episode. So, once we finally got all the details painted on the top view, we can start to extrude this into a 3D model. But this first version wouldn't really work out with all of the functions that we wanted to use to get the shapes. But then we got a very good idea when we started to think about how we're going to actually print this object. Since this has to be divided into a lot of different smaller parts, and a lot of these parts are repeated around the body, we can make them all the same. By making a little cut out of the main circle, we can add the function to slide the pieces on when we've got the main body printed. And as soon as we have those bases done for the repeating parts, we can add the holes for the aluminium extrudes that we're going to use for the arms. To give it a lot more strength and ease of use with the least amount of mass. And so the body connectors can be repeated in a circle pattern and the arm connectors can be mirrored twice around the body to get all the needed components. On it! Party. Three. Gee, thanks! But yeah, it did take a little while to clean those up. 
And for the bottoms of all the connectors, we even had to cut and sand off the supports, because those just wouldn't come off. But after all that work, we can finish this part by gluing all the separate parts together. Even using the body connectors as little clamps to hold the parts of the main circle together. After which, we can also glue those in place. And also checking to make sure the holes for the threaded rod will not be disrupted. And while those dry, we can also make the landing frame from some aluminium tubing. Not a first for the both of us, using a tube bender to make a 3D shape. But we recovered again with some more reference material and using a line on the tube to make sure all the angles are much better this time. And it worked out really well. Still not perfect, but probably the best we're going to get. Finally, we can use the last parts of aluminium, the angled extrusions for the arms. Those are cut to 21 centimeters to be inserted into the arm connectors. And with those added, we can finally open the packages of all the shopping we had to do for this project. Including motors, transmitters, receivers, flight controllers, ESCs, propellers and LED rings. And in the other package, we also have a battery, charger, and a safety bag. A lot of parts for a very big project. But first, we have a few more things to build before we can even start to think about finishing the drone. We're first up, painting these plates with a black gesso, and then a silver spray paint. These will then be placed on the bottom of the drone to finish off the landing gear. But while those first dry, we can finally also add the large threaded rods through the arm connectors. And these are then fastened with some bolts. Some smaller M3 bolts are also threaded through the flight controller plate in the middle. As these will be the way to attach both the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller. We 
with a little test fit to make sure it works. So with everything working and the plates dry, we can thread those on the opposite end of the rods to start making the landing gear. But we still need the motors to be mounted to our arms. So after a bit of trial and error to get the right positioning for the holes, we can use a hole punch and a drill to add the holes for all the motors. And while we have the hole punch and the drill out, why not also add the holes for the landing gear? After all the drilling, we can fasten the bolts and the threaded rod to lock in the place with the new landing gear. But we're still missing a very important part of the drone, the claw. So, during a livestream, we've been able to make the claw for the drone to be 3D printed. Designing it so it can be controlled by some server motors that can be attached to the receiver to be remotely controlled. So after a bit of an assembly, we can add these main parts of the claw to the landing plates. Specifically the one that you guys might be able to spot as a bit of an outlier. First drilling out the claws to give them a 0.5mm tolerance and then using some more M5 threaded rods to make the axle of the claw. And at the same time using the plate to hold it within the system. So with those parts securely inserted, we can start to solder all the wires. Starting where we left off with the claw. Since both of the servos are placed mirrored from each other, we can combine the two wires into one swappable port that we can connect to the receiver of the controller directly, to be able to open and close the claw with the switch on the controller. After that, we got the grueling task to solder all the wires from the motors to the ESC board and to that, also add the plug of the battery.
And at last, we add the claw to the bottom of the drone and connect the ESC to the flight controller. And with a lot of confusion around updating the controller and even having to get a new working receiver for drones, we finally got a working frame for the Ammonite's drone. Hey Greek Gears, Robert here, and we hope you enjoyed part 3 of Project Horseshoe. Before we end this video, I wanted to apologize again for the inconvenience with our new schedule. School has just dealt us a very heavy blow, and that has to come first. But fear not, we will continue to create more Splatoon projects. Believe me, those will not stop anytime soon. But we just can't keep up the strict schedule anymore. Anyway, we hope you guys understand. And are still looking forward to more of a return to form with part 4 of the project, the housing of the drone. But that's going to be all from us for now. Keep those creative gears turning and we will see you in part 4.